done. And when you are trying to sculpt your deck for what you perceive the metagame to be, you make a decision like cutting Claim the Firstborn down to just one copy, no additional copies in the sideboard, and it comes back to hurt you in a matchup like this. All right, speaking of this matchup, for people watching at home, what card do you think is the call out as this card is going to make the difference if we see it hit the table? I got to point towards Mayhem Devil. So the heroic threats of Simon Nielsen, they're all kind of redundant, right? They're all kind of the same thing. Make them big, kill the opponent pretty fast. For Logan, in order to handle those threats in a really meaningful way past Fatal Push and without multiple copies of Claim the Firstborn, it's got to be untapping with Mayhem Devil on the battlefield and then doing what this deck does when it gets to untap with Mayhem Devil, which is shoot everything down, including the opponent. All right, well, round number four is coming up next. I'm going to pass it on over to Ailey and Corey with the call. Thank you so much, Maria. We are in for a gunslinging matchup here, for sure. I know it's not time for Outlaws of Thunder Junction yet, but yeah, Mayhem Devils basically. Anyways, I started blasting, yeah. if you've ever seen it on a magic card. Hi, I'm Ailey, this is Corey, and we are bringing you some pioneer action here. Logan Nettles versus Simon Nielsen, two heavyweights in Definitely. this community. So let's check out what they're playing and what we can look forward to, Corey, here. What do you think we're gonna see? You know, so Rakdos Sacrifice, like Cedric was saying, just heavily favored against any kind of creature decks. <laughs> Even with only one claim, the Firstborn, you still have four <laughs> Fatal Push. You have Thoughtseize as Duresses to break up the cards like God's Willing and stuff. So I would still put the advantage to Logan, but it's not that like 70-30 advantage that it would be with four claim, the Firstborn. Um, but it, it is a little closer now. Also, it's just hard to even react to Boros Heroic because, you know, me and probably many other people thought that deck was kind of dead, yeah. you know? So it'll be interesting oh, 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 to see okay. uh, this matchup unfold. It was really interesting to see that this deck was represented more highly than the Convoke deck, which, you know, was yeah. kind of all the hotness until Amalia pitched up on the scene. Yep, yep, exactly. Boros Heroic, the Amalia matchup is really bad, but yeah, Boros Heroic is still extremely powerful. Kicking things off here, let's get this game underway. Two drop on board here in the Blood Tithe Harvester. Something that we have come to know and uh, love or hate, depending on which side of the board you're on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Logan Nettles has been playing this Rakdos Sacrifice strategy for so long and really dominated, you know, especially Magic Online events. If you ever play against Jabberwocky, well, you probably <laughs> lost. You know, you probably lost the match and, uh, you know, Logan Nettles probably won the tournament or top four did. <laughs> and he even just 7 won day two of the Explorer Qualifier Weekend oh. to queue for the Arena Champs here in a couple of months. So no he is uh, really on fire with this deck. No biggie, just multitasking, you know. Yeah, no big deal. It's kind of <laughs> like those stories you hear. I think it was Arna Hushinbet. He qualified on for two, he qualified two different ways for the same event. Yeah. Through an Arena thing and through one of the tournaments. So it's just like, okay, you, you guys don't stop competing ever. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you got to get all that value. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Shota did that as well. After At one of the, the last events. Pioneer Pro Tour, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the dream start for Logan outside of a turn one Thoughtseize to uh, really be able to even out this curve. Harvester into Fable is exactly what this deck is trying to do. Oh, yeah. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the most played card this weekend. Really? Okay. It is, yeah. Um, just ahead of Thoughtseize and Fatal Push, I believe. Which is kind of funny, considering that Phoenix is the most played archetype. And not playing any of those. No. Yeah, yeah. wow, so incredible. Goes to show you how good that is. But mm -hmm. yeah, Illuminator, Illuminator Virtuoso, if left unchecked, could get really, really dangerous here for Simon. So here's one of the turns that's going to be very key to, uh, as you were saying, start blasting here with <laughs> Mayhem Devil. As we see it in hand, now that's going to be amazing here, because really all you need to be doing is attacking with the Shaman, have Mayhem Devil in play, mm -hmm. you can sacrifice the treasure, aim a damage at the creature, and then if Simon were to protect it anyway, you can use that mana to sacrifice the blood yeah. to shoot another damage. So, you know, this seems like a slam dunk play uh, for Logan, but we'll see if maybe he has something even better than that. Well, let's go to combat here as we see the Harvester as well as the Shaman get in there. There's the treasure token being generated off of that creature. Yeah, and we see the two Fatal Pushes as well, <laughs> and a Harvester and another land. So Logan's able to go land four and active, sack the treasure and sack the blood and Fatal Push a creature. You know, you hate to call things too early, but things are looking extremely good for Logan. As it stands, though, no real threat to the Illuminator Virtuoso. Yep. 
does have a couple combat tricks in hand there to Simon Nielsen, but none of them, I believe, give protection unless that's Lorenz Escape. Yes, Lorenz yep. Escape would give the uh, Indestructible. Yep, and has the Reckless Rage as well to be able to deal with Mayhem Devil. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you really, Boros Heroic in general just really needs one creature to live, and then you make it gigantic, you know, similar to a Boggle that's strategy. Yeah. But you know, if you're able to just pick off the creatures like this, it just becomes so brutal. And Simon's not even trying to protect yeah. it. Sees that the blood could be sacrificed to finish off the creature and just gets Mayhem Devil off the battlefield, which has to be step one, number one. Oh, yeah. Eliminator Virtuoso does have the ability to stick around a little bit further because it has the connive uh, ability connected to it if you yep. target it. In this situation, it won't stick around, but that is like another extra layer added on top of it that Logan Nettles on Rector's Sacrifice has to think about. Yep, absolutely. And uh, that treasure being sacrificed to kill Simon's creature also just gets to use the mana to cast a second Blood Tithe Harvester <laughs> and create a two-turn clock already. Yeah, yeah, this is going Logan Edel's way and pretty much what we expected to see yeah. in this because, you know, if this creature's on the board, Rakdos Sacrifice should be beating it. Those are the matchups that they're favored in. And we can see it doing a very, very good job here of closing things out before Simon Nielsen's even able to get anything on the board. Yep. Or totally at agree. least keep it stick. Exactly, yeah. Simon needs to have one of those kind of games like, you know, on the play, play a creature on turn one, play a creature on turn two, have two threats and protect them for the rest of the game and yeah. kind of hope that happens. But Simon started this game with, you know, you look at the graveyard here, it was Defiant Strike yeah. on Logan's creature. You know, then turn two, really nothing. Turn three, the creature, in hopes to protect it. And that's just not fast enough. That's not yeah. efficient enough um, from this Boros Heroic deck. So an ancestral anger in hand there. So whoop, monastery whoop. swift spear. Not a good look. <laughs> it's the board, <laughs> and it's going to be past the turn back. And fingers crossed for Simon Nielsen, our 2023 Player of the Year. Yeah, and impressive to see Simon Nielsen 3-0 already. I was listening earlier on, right as the first draft was starting. Yeah. His name was being called. He, <laughs> he biked to the venue and uh, got lost a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, I saw that. He was like, oh, whoops, we'll see you around four. Yeah, Meanwhile. managed to make it just in time and 3 0 the draft. That's our player of the year Jeez. here. Really impressive. Is he going for a back-to-back -back player of the year, perhaps? I mean, Who you're knows? definitely not, go not, not going for it, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Another swing in here for eight. Two Blood Tithe Harvesters alongside the Shaman. Another treasure and the reflection of Kikijiki on the board. Just add a little couple more woes to uh, Simon Nielsen's troubles here. Yep, and you see Logan's not trying to be the one to be proactive in this spot. You see two fatal pushes mm. and an unlucky witness here. And Logan, in this position where he's at 18 life, just doesn't want to be the person to blink first. Yeah. So say you just want to make Simon waste his cards and then use your removal unless you're about to die or something. So indestructible and hexproof would keep the Swift Spear around and get rid of one of these harvesters. Yep, and you do this first from Simon, so then the next spell could be a pump spell. Yeah. Another Lorenz escape. So double indestructible, but double fatal push. And you got to think that that is enough for Simon Nielsen for us to go to game number two here. So on the back foot, heading into this second game. Yep, absolutely. And you hear the players kind of chat about <laughs> the game here. You know, when you get to this level, there's definitely competitiveness for sure, but players at the end of the day want to talk out yeah. these situations because they're students of the game oh, for sure. and they love playing and getting better. Uh, that really shows a true champion. I mean, that's how you master something, right? Yep. Always a student. Exactly. And here's one of the sweet sideboard cards and one of my favorite cards ever printed here from Kaldheim, and that is Showdown of the Scalds. Just being oh, yeah. being able to... I thought you were going to say Thoughtseize. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> 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 fair enough, fair enough. But it is one of those cards that in these mm. matchups where your opponent is trying to kill all your creatures, which is going to be Rakdos mid, Rakdos sack, yeah, even Phoenix good. probably. Yeah, okay. Maybe not Phoenix since it gets spell pierce, but being able to, you know, restock uh, your hand with yeah. something like that 
uh, oh. ends up being really nice. It's phenomenal on chapters two and three. If you have a bunch of cantrips in hand, even you can just like, you're basically, you might be discarding to hand size at the end of it, but <laughs> yeah. getting this 10th district legionnaire out of hand, I don't believe we saw another creature in there, but there's my favorite kitty oh. of all time. Oh I yeah, love this cat so much. <laughs> I could say the same. Who are you then? But oh, I, I knew you, you know loved this Baldrick about familiar. me. Okay, yeah. uh, you, I accept your Yorian love. Okay, and I, you accept my kitty cat. Well, I don't accept it, but sure, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Fable the Mirror Breaker following up the Cauldron Familiar who chips in for another point of damage here. And just a sad purchase of Giganta here from Simon. This feature match here for Pioneer has not gone his way. Showdown to restock here and hope something good happens, but when Logan already has the Shaman in play that's going to start cranking out treasures, pretty brutal, and there is no creatures in that Showdown pile, which is really what Simon needs right now. Oh, boy, yeah, that's not great at all. Monstrous Rage, Defiant Strike. I mean, thank goodness you can use it on mm -hmm. your opponent's creature if you really yeah. need to, but that's just signaling. I have nothing else going for me. Yeah, and there's no creatures besides a big five mana elk in hand, so <laughs> Simon could go for that next turn, but then you got to get rid of the rest yeah, of your cards here. Jackie can, she, she can hang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good card. And it won't Not be bad on this battlefield. Oh, boy, double Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, figured. Talk about one of the best cards printed in the last, how long ago was that now? Two years. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible card, oh, that oh, is for sure. <laughs> Good grief. And Logan's hand, though, is not that great. It's land. I saw a Rending Volley and a Fatal Push. So Giganta actually looks pretty good I mean, as the only creature that doesn't get Fatal Pushed in Simon's whole deck. Sure, but do we care what's in his hand right now? Look at his board. Yeah. He's going to be refueling it with the next Fable. Yeah. We're going to be getting another creature on the board in quick okay, succession. Okay. Yeah. So favorite Hoplity. It was going to be interesting to see if Giant Giganta targets, wanted to be uh, cast if targets. Simon didn't top deck a creature. But when you get a creature you can cast, you want to just get the yeah. value from the showdown. I have five. And so there is a fatal push available. And Logan asking how many cards in hand. This is really trying to signify. Logan has two removal spells with the access to play yeah. both of them. But if Simon has two protection spells, this could be a nightmare for Logan. Sure. Right, so it gets two counters and I draw a card. Counter courtesy of Shodan and its own ability. Mm -hmm. And now more than likely Monstrous Rage is coming down as well to get another couple counters plus that roll. And if Simon doesn't cast Monstrous Rage, you got to, thinking from Logan's side, you got to think Simon sounds really good. Yeah. And, and really wants to act on Logan's turn for giving up that value. Yeah, getting the monster roll token would be nice. But I think that would be enough for Something Logan to here? fire off that Rages? fatal push. Yeah. Oh, OK. OK. Got ancestral Rage. So, excuse me, Ancestral That's Anger. Fine. Yep. And that would kind of show me that Simon Tan maybe isn't the best if you just need to draw a card here to find something. Yeah. But it's kind of hard to tell. Monster's Rage. Yep. Two triggers. Now yep. Logan could try to fire off a removal Monster spell, roll. but to be fair, the Rending Volley is quite out of range now. Mm. I'll pass All right. Hmm. Okay. Logan hanging on to that fatal push. It's just like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, and I mean, this creature is gigantic now. And you got to think, well, this Rending Volley is now not extremely useful. But there was a spot where if he would have Rending Volleyed it, in response, Simon could have just did all this and pumped the creature enough, yeah. where then it would be countered anyways. So Rending Volley, just not the best here. Still has the uh, fatal push in the holster. Yep. Should be needing to get rid of this favorite hoplite. And I think if Logan can discard some cards to find a second piece of removal spell, a second piece of removal for this favorite hoplite, he'll be in a great spot as you can aim one at it. Yeah. A likely protection spell will happen and then you aim the second one. So Simon's built himself a nice little wall here with this uh, quite large favorite hoplite. What's it, a 7-8 at the moment? Yeah, looks or like 9-8 with the plus and plus one from the roll. 
Yeah, eight nine, right? Yeah, I think an eight nine. You're I bet Logan is really <laughs> hoping for that to claim the first point. Yeah, no kidding. That's <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, if I get that and you don't have a protection spell, then I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. There's got to be a protection spell. But even if you put that on the favorite hoplite, protection right happens, then you fatal eight push nine, it. That's still eight eight plenty nine. good. <laughs> okay. It looks like... What do we get? Oh, yeah, we're still on discard. I, I was going to say, those two cards oh, yeah, were probably discarded that. before. And if we find Fatal Push or something, we're probably done here. So big draw steps here. Ooh, what do we got? <laughs> Simon. <laughs> He's assumed the position. The please don't have it, please don't have it, please yeah. don't have it. Yeah, I think si everyone knows what's going on here. And there's oh, a duress to clear nice. the way. Okay, that perfect. could be good enough. But if there's two protection spells here from Simon, then it won't be. He's only got mana for one, though, I think. Yeah, but you can only duress away one of them. Sure. So Simon just reveals the hand and says, yep, here it is. And it's Mayhem Devil, Unlucky Witness, and Fatal Push for Logan. So if there is two protection spells, Simon can kind of clear it up. It's but if there's only one, which it kind of yeah, looks, looks like. like is. Yeah, there is only one. So now Simon has the choice of playing it right now to play around Claim the Firstborn or forcing Logan to have it. Oh, man, that's such a tricky situation to be in here. Yeah, either way you slice it, uh, this is going to be Logan having a huge turn here. Yeah, and a very impressive victory here in our first round of Pioneer of the Pro Tour. And that is that big old creature off the board. So yeah. Logan is free to swing away. Yeah, imagine playing a deck that, you know, is kind of off the rails here in Boros Heroic. <laughs> and you're like, all right, we got the metagame right. I want to play against Isid Phoenix, Blue White Control, Rakdos Mid. And you sit mm. down against the best Rakdos sack player in the world. <laughs> and you're just like, come on. Yeah, there's 200 and whatever other players here. Exactly. Could I not have had somebody not playing this, please? But yeah, you got to be ready for everything. Yeah, and with that Mayhem Devil in hand, like, we're going to have a ton of damage here. Yes. Oh, yeah. You're right, you're right. Seven. Seven to 19. Oof, down to seven. So the next swing out for Logan Nettles yeah. is likely going to seal the deal. There's the unlucky yeah. witness. Just these. It's, it's, the, it's the revenge of the little itty-bitty idiots. Yeah. And you can get a Giganta here. You can put a Monstrous Rage on it, trigger Showdown, so you have a, you know, a 7-7 seven, seven blocker. Yeah. But this Mayhem Devil w is just going to go oh, way yeah. over the top of this. Three treasures with all that damage coming through. That's only one blocker, so go to Chapter 3. Here comes the Reflection. Number two on the board. <laughs> like, I got Mayhem Devil. Reflection can copy it to make another one. Yeah. Yeah, the first one doesn't have summoning sickness. Look at Simon's face. You can kind of feel the, uh, oh, right. yeah, you can do the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do the you thing. can do the thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, do the thing. I like to see the thing. Let's do it. So Logan can deal about uh, 45 damage or so here. No yeah, yeah. big deal. Yeah. Sacrifice. Yes, let's take two. Copy the devil. Oh, sorry, deal. take one, yeah. Go to six. Yeah. yeah. And now copy a devil. Now yeah, every treasure every is two. And oh yeah, if you make it to end step when these reflections go away, you sacrifice those at end step as well. So anyways, I started blasting. You called it from the beginning. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, now copying mayhem devils too. Go to combat, make treasures, sack treasures, die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Rakdo Sacrifice. It's been my favorite deck since War of the Spark. When yeah. that little Mayhem Devil was invented. I love it so much. It's too good. Well, I think you might be the only person in the world to really be, you know, treasuring the cat oven combo. But hey, I love watching a master work and a master at their craft. And Logan Nettle is that. I would be very afraid with all these other pioneer rounds to have to play against Logan Nettles at 4-0 with oh, yeah. his pet deck, which happens to be pretty good right now. That's if you play against a lot of creatures. Pioneer is yeah. so great because you so can great. just play your pet deck and be competitive yeah. with it. Right. Yeah. It's awesome. No, yeah, you absolutely can. You can play any deck you want. A lot of decks are pretty close. You know, you have some matchups like Phoenix against Lotus Field where, you know, Lotus Field kind of dominates Phoenix. But outside of that, 
each deck kind of has one really bad matchup, and then yeah. everything else is very close. So It's so close. If you want to see a lot of really cool decks today, do not leave the broadcast, because it's going to be Pioneer all We're day. We're going to see two more <laughs> off of this break, friends, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor. There have been dastardly things afoot, and uh, a lot of them have included two woes to, you know, mayhem devils, which I'm perfectly happy about. I'm Ailey, this is Corey, and we are jumping into our second feature match, which has two very prolific players. Yep. Indeed, Jake Beardsley, our Pro Tour, the Lord of the Rings champion, up against the runner-up from Pro Tour Phyrexia, all the one. Benton Madsen playing is it creativity. I love this story from Benton. Benton <laughs> lost the finals to Reed Duke. Reed was playing is it creativity and Benton's like, you know what? This Pioneer Pro Tour, I am going to win it with creativity instead of just <laughs> taking second with Boggles here. So yeah, a classic if you can't beat him, join him scenario. All righty, well, let's jump in here. And looking at Jake Beardsley side of things, yep. playing Rakdos mid-range, which everyone has kind of felt like, yeah, it's the good deck. It's kind of like the default. Is it, yeah. is it safe to call it the default deck if you're not too sure what you want to be playing? You know, it honestly didn't matter for Jake. Jake is contractually <laughs> obligated to play Fable the Mirror Breaker after winning with uh, Rakdos Evoke for uh, the Lord of the Rings, you know. Uh, just just has to play it at this point. Oh my goodness. <laughs> good. I literally just bought this. Nice. 18? Like literally, like in between the draft round and the, and the one thing, <laughs> uh, the one, chat. yeah, the one thing I'm gonna give you a good head start on watching mm -hmm. this. They both love to chat out their oh, plays, yeah. so I, you know, we might not even have to do anything okay. here. We could let them just cool. uh, we commentate. We just sit back this. and enjoy, like yeah. friends. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna play a Blood Tithe Harvester trigger. Blood, yep. please. Blood Tithe Harvester, everyone's Seven. favorite turn two, and that is a dead Blood Tithe Harvester. Yep. And now this is it creativity deck for people that have not seen this deck in action. Basically, what you have to do here is get to five mana mm -hmm. um, with indomitable creativity. You got to have two treasures in play, and then you win the game. 
Oh, cool. You ha there's a couple things that can't happen. There's one <laughs> World Spine Worm and one Zendigos. Those are the two targets you'll be searching up. They're the only two targets in the deck. Yeah. So if you ever draw one of those, it gets a little bit dicey as you have to find a way to put them back in your yeah, deck. I know what that one does. There's a plethora of cards to do it so. Yeah. But yeah, you are Zendigosing, targeting a World Spine Worm to double its power, attack for 30. This is how Reed Duke won Pro Tour Phyrexia. <laughs> um, very similar list with some upgrades. Sure. Oh my goodness. I also have a Goblin Shaman. <laughs> Dueling Goblin Shamans here. Yep. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We're going to see this card for very, very many Pro Tours to come. Yep. Yeah, and now these uh, Fable of the Mirror Breakers serve very, very different purposes from the player. You know, I mean, Benton really just wants the Shaman as a target, wants the treasure as a target. Yeah. And if he is able to find Indomitable Creativity and not draw one of those creatures, you, you can do I guess you can't do it now because you have to attack with the Shaman to get yeah. the treasure, but you'd be online, essentially. Sure. It's kind of funny looking for all these creatures that just come with tokens. You know, it's yeah. kind, of, kind of like the, the Is It in Soul deck. It's like, does it make a creature when it enters? Great. Cool. Yes. You're in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Benton um, has kind of the go-to turn four play. Be like, oh, so unlucky, no play. Pass to you on four mana. You know, we see this from collected company gamers in the past. It's big score is uh, what's going to happen here. A good way to, you know, sculpt your hand as well as get the prerequisite two treasures to then start comboing off. Yeah, multiple copies of this effect, big score and the unexpected windfall. Big score being easier to cost. Yeah. Yeah. Any and you see just, you know, a, a solid mid-range draw from this Rakdos deck, and, you know, that's really what it is. There's never anything really flashy happening. You know, you're playing Bankbuster, you're drawing cards, you're killing creatures. So when your opponent has this ability to go way over the top here with this combo finish, it ends up being a little bit rough if you don't have a bunch of duresses and a bunch of Thoughtsies mixed with a clock as well. I'm not seeing any uh, creativities in hand, though, no? with Benton, so... Currently, his game plan is just, oh, look, I have a Kiki Jiki. Yep, but you know what I did see in hand? A World Spine Worm. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, and there's no Volcanic Spite or similar effects like yeah. uh, Valakut Awakening to be able to send that back into the list. Well, there actually oh, is. Like so there's Big Score, World Spine Worm. If you're going to draw one of the threats, that's the one to draw because when yeah. World Spine Worm hits the graveyard, you shuffle it into the library. So you can still Big Score that one away. You can't Big Score away Zendigos. So it ends up being a little rough. <laughs> I mean, it's only nine mana. We can cost that with all our treasures, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're only, what, like two mana off? Yeah. Easy peasy. It is possible. No, it's 11 sure. mana. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to big score it right now because I see big score number two. Try yeah. again. Uh, pitching World Time Worm. World Time Worm. Try again. So uh, I'm just going to double check on that. That's a trigger, so it will shuffle itself and then you'll draw. Yep. Yeah, because it's a digital cost. Oh, boy. Yep, that's fine with me. Benton would love it to be the other way around, so you yeah. wouldn't. You would have less odds of actually drawing the card. It's but like when you chaos warp something uh, in Commander, and then it just <laughs> pops right back off the top of the library. Oh my goodness! All right, what are the odds, Corey? I <laughs> never ask me the odds. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 50-50. I'll take the Riley okay, answer. Sure, yeah. It yeah. either happens Everything or it doesn't. Everything is 50-50. So, yeah. World's Spine <laughs> Let's see. No, not World's Spine God. <laughs> Just two bricks again, though. Yeah, no, this is not going well here for Benson. He's got all the setup he could possibly need, yeah. but no creativity to follow up. And that's just really the struggle with this Is It Creativity deck mm -hmm. is there's a fail rate. You know, if you just don't draw the right amount of cards in the right order, you know, your deck just does nothing. You know, and that's a thing with Jake Beardsley's Rakdos mid-range list. There's not a fail rate. Eventually, you're going to do the thing that Crocs is going to come back. You're going to thought seize your opponent. You're going to empty this bank buster. You yeah. never really run out of steam. Yeah, that's one thing that's really good about the Rakdos mid-range list is it is yeah. so consistent. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I think the worst p case scenario is you sc flood or screw. There's mm -hmm. like no real in between. Yep, absolutely. There was a Volcanic Spite in hand for Benton, so it could kill off the Shaman. Put something back and just keep digging. Yep, we got Spite, Anger, Fiery Impulse, and two lands. Now Actually, out of, you know, quote-unquote gas, as you don't have another big score to be able to find some more yeah. cards, but any creativity off the top at any point would have just yeah. been completely GG here. So this yeah, is now sure. a race against uh, the clock, essentially, or a race against the top of Benton's deck. Oh, yeah, sure. If there's a creativity... 
you know, Banton is likely the winner of this matchup. Yeah, and that's the thing. With the way this is set up, you when creativity was really right. good in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. you know, uh, last year, there was not a ton of removal spells Cast that could deal with the worm. Now there's bitter triumph. There's go for the throat. Yeah. There's actual ways to deal with world spine worm. Go to combat. On Six. when it attacks you, it still makes a bunch of worms, which is still a problem, go. but it's not impossible. So you know, uh, that's fine. this matchup's gotten worse uh, for this pro tour than it was for the last one. Yeah. Now it's shield red on the board. This is a very quick clock for Benton Madsen. Jake Beardsley is putting on immense pressure here. That Bankbuster getting in as well. So activating the Mirix, getting a little critter down on the board. And now it's got to be kind of tempting here from Benton to just Volcanic Spite something just yeah. to get rid of a card. But you also are tempted to wait until it's your turn to be able to go Anger the Gods go. plus Spite to yeah. kill the Shield Drake yeah, yeah. and the, the Reflection. Yes. You'll be at 10. There's Creativity. Oh. I spy. I spy with my little eye. Okay, so now Benton has to choose. Do you want to go for the win? In a pretty obvious two-mana open scenario. This is an open deckless tournament, so Jake knows what the finish is. Yeah. So if I was Benton, I'd be like, you are very, very likely to have one of your two bitter triumphs or one go for the throat. I'm pretty sure I didn't see a brain in your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that makes sense because if you... Uh, if you were to abrade the target for creativity, yeah. you would only get one thing. So you can target three things yeah. to be safe, but then you are throwing away some resources. Yeah, I mean, just overkill here, right? Yeah. So here we go. Jake put on as much pressure as he possibly could, but Benson yep. Madsen has assembled has assembled the combo. <laughs> the com you know, I'll, I'll dare, I'll say it. it it's Splinter Twin here, you know? <laughs> but this is a Splinter Twin like the actual, you know, Pestermite Splinter yeah. Twin combo. It can be disrupted by a Doomblade style of effect. And yeah. you've got to think Jake has it here. Uh, it um, like or is posturing. That's possible as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, once that targets the World Spine Worm, I'm going to pay three life and try and bitter triumph it. 17. Yep. Oh, boy. Uh, that is fine. I that is fine, fine says uh, Benson Madsen. It's not really fine, though. Yeah. Well, how does he win? Yeah, Jake gets to breathe a, a sigh of relief there because there is else. three spell pierces in Benton's list, five five which so also, sure you know, yeah, leads yeah, me go. to believe have, that maybe Benton have could seven. have Volcanic Spike the Reflection to try to find one of those to win the game on the spot, uh, so sure. but decided that that was not worth it. I'll be at 16. I have one poison. In goes the little uh, mite that could. It does leave some worms behind, you know, so not, not yeah, the worst thing. World Spine Worm getting got there and is shuffled back into the library. So if another creativity makes its presence known, then we could do this all over again. Yep. Or, of course, get 11 mana. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, so this is still great Ooh. for Benton. Benton gets to go Anger yeah, plus so like Shock Down the Shield Red. Uh -huh. So Benton's going to have 15 power. Nice. There's going to be no Shield Red. And now Jake, even though he had the card, is still wildly behind now. Oh, yeah. Great turn of events there for Benton. Able to Two and double up those uh, removal spells there. Yep. Get that Shield Red off the board to stop that gain and drain effect. Yeah, that, that is definitely was Actually the biggest problem on the board. Trigger, I'll make a, I'll and that's got to be treasure. bad news bears here for Jake. Oh, yeah. Um, as you need to find shielded, plus you need to find ways to deal with these worms. Yeah, trampling worms. Xenagos able to target any which one he so Back chooses. Blood. Discard blood crypt. Jake Beardsley now digging through his deck, looking for an answer here. Yep. Very much a sign of desperation. Because that's 20 damage coming through if he doesn't ever move before the yes. one that's targeted. Correct. Plus, there was a Soken Zen, so you could make trigger? it 22. Okay. Blood type trigger? Yep. Yeah, so oh. 20. <laughs> As it stands, it would be Jake going to one, but that channeled sure. Soken Zen yep. should, uh, should wrap it up here, if I saw that right. Maybe we had to play that land. Okay, yeah, the spike. There's volcanic spike. Yeah, though, the spike either way, I think well, yeah. I think Benton's in the clear here, so yeah. just has to pick which one he wants to remove. Turn things sideways. Yep, just doing the math here to double check. 
you get to wait till blockers happen as well mm -hmm. and then kill the creature as trample will yeah. still uh, take effect there. <laughs> I do love watching the decisions being made through their fingertips. Where are we going? Just have yeah. here. We have to tap there. No, we have to that first, big, big score, score first and foremost. Get a couple treasures. Yeah, I wonder if Benton sees go, it. Yeah, he's because, just getting, he's going for like, I'm going to make triple sure that I have this. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with, you know, making sure you play as efficient yeah. as possible in every scenario. Go to blocks. So everything that can possibly block here for Jake Beardsley does, but with this volcanic spite resolving. I have two. Ten, yes. uh, fourteen. I, I, I'm counting seventeen. Yes, I believe 15. that is correct. Oh, you know, 20. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I did announce that. So 10, 15, 20. Minus three is seventeen. You are correct, actually. Right. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Math is for blockers. We got there. There folks. you go. All right, so pretty cool. You know, not yep. even having the big worm on the board. Still, the little critters, or little, I say. The oh, five fives it leaves behind, getting the job done there. Xenagos, yep. not really an answer in Jake Beersy's deck for that card. Not really, and not a lot of answers, you know, in the format. You know, yeah. Azorius Control is going to have a lot of answers and ways to, you know, tuck it with Teferi, stuff yeah. like that. But, yep. uh, Likely yeah. So here's the Thoughtseize to start it up from Benton. Benton's just crossing I fingers, going, like, come <laughs> on, world spine worm. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And this is a rough hand. This was a keep as well. So yeah. you really wanted wow, so okay, that surprises spite, me a bit too. Worm with keeping that removal spell, which gets to put the worm back. Yeah. You Mountain, know, that's gotta lead me to believe that Jake has a Here's fable on three. Uh, no, that's what that would there's... scream to me because on the draw with oh, one of I these miss... can't counter unless you pay one type Coast. of effects. You gotta think you have a good three really draw. Really no, you're good. Out. Two, four, six. Uh, I'm at 18. Go ahead. So just mountain go from Benson Madsen. Does Jake Beardsley have our favorite two drop? No. no awesome nothing. Turn. Okay, yeah, and that's so an, just sitting back waiting to kill something. That's another big reason to take Dwari Disruption. If you don't have a two drop <laughs> and you're reliant on Fable, Strong card coast for Benz. This is a much slower start. Yeah. To this uh, post board yep. game. Cast fable. There we go. A, a phrase that Jake Beardsley has said so many times. Cast fable. <laughs> Get a shaman. <laughs> Another storm card coast here for Benson yep. Manson. Trigger. Yep. Chapter two now. For Fable the Mirror Breaker. How many cards are we going to see ditched here? Draw. Just a bit of triumph. Just one is always a scary <laughs> sight <laughs> yeah. when you're uh, playing against. Panic Spine will take care of the Shaman. Yep. That resolves. Final and uh, gee, I wonder what went back no. to yeah. the deck. And that's really nice if you Second never phase. shuffle, which you don't shuffle a lot in Pioneer. You yeah, know, there's not the a ton of ways to do that. Yeah. So Eventually having hits. one of your targets just on Painful the bottom, thing. no matter what, is very yep. useful knowledge to know. Yes. So now we just have to play Dodgems with uh, Xenagos. Okay, that was a dig through time off the time. So Benton, you know, kept a very medium-ish hand uh, to start, but has drawn quite well. You know, you have the Brotherhood's End there to be able to deal with Bankbuster right now if you want. You have yeah. Big Score to be able to cast and try to, you know, find Indomitable Creativity and go from there. Um, and then you have dig through time to get a little bit late game presence. So a lot going and on here for Benton. Bank Buster. Yep. Yeah, definitely has ways to develop his board. Yep. find Draw what he needs to get that combo yep. going. And I do think I saw uh, at least one Thoughtseize, maybe two from Jake. So Jake was kind of waiting for this big turn, Direct for the big score oh, turn. Okay. Really smart from Jake, because you're now forcing Ooh. the action to do the big score right now, and then you get all the perfect information. Yeah. Excellent timing here from Jake. So Duress is going to see these new cards that Benton gets to hand, gets his treasures, discards the land. And we find a second uh, sure. big score and another land. And a, yeah, and a dig. So if Jake does indeed have a Thoughtseize as well, I think we're just taking big score, dig through time, and, and, and being on Take our way. Dig through time. Yep. And then 
Scott sees you, I'll be at 16 <laughs> to the big store. Yeah, love it. Wow. Great play I'll be at 16, Jake. you at 20, and you've got Now, that halfway, being said, if all Canal this happened and, and Benton still is like, oops, creativity off the yeah. top, you just get, we get to say you can't thought sees the top yeah. of the deck, and congrats <laughs> on being 4-0, Benton, you know? <laughs> Shock go. Oh, man. Shock go when you only have a bank buster on top, but you do have an active reflection. So there is a cool little trick that Jake's trying to set up here. Uh -huh. Oh, I guess you cannot crew it right now. Yeah, you need three to crew, but you could at end step uh -huh. uh, crew the bank buster, copy it with a reflection, and then you have that next turn to tap it to draw a card. Um, pretty but, cheeky. Yeah, but you do need to need a, need three a, to crew. Need so. a pilot for it still, yeah. So not sure why we took two there. Life total really doesn't matter for Jake, to be fair. You're either taking 30 <laughs> or you're not taking any damage. Life total resource, of course. So yep. Don't be afraid to use it. What's well, Benton cooking up here? Artifacts. Right. Destroy. Uh, Brotherhood's okay. End. Deal three to all creatures. That's wow. Fine. That was uh, <laughs> that was almost a disaster for Benton. <laughs> yeah. Benton almost said artifacts and then realized that Benton had two treasures there. Yeah. So right. that would have been a nightmare. Yeah, that would have been two no points. bueno because yeah. then creativity has no targets whatsoever Croxa? if you yeah. it. Unless you start Mirexing uh, <laughs> yeah. for multiple turns in a row. And there's Croxa with five cards in the yard. So if there's another land, it is a tapped land. Otherwise, that would have been very, very strong. Yeah, that would have been sweet. Okay. Activate Reckoner Bank Buster. Yep. I'll make a treasure and a pilot and draw a card. OK. I can crew some stuff. My turn. And now Benton just drew land there. So those sure. perfectly timed Duress and Thoughtseize here easily could have won Jake the game. Four. Oh, for sure. In for four here got now 14, with the Reckoner 13. Bank Buster, who's got his pilot. Croxa in the yard, able to come back. And yep. you have two cards in hand. And you can just see the speed at which Jake plays. You know, mm -hmm. the, the moment's not getting to him. The All experience the with these Rakdos yeah. strategies are yeah. definitely showing. Yeah. Like, very impressive stuff here Good. from our Pro yeah. Tour, the Lord of the Rings champion. Uh, you know, that's one thing that all the players pretty much unanimously agreed on yeah. in their surveys is get familiar with your deck. Yes. Know exactly what it is you're doing, what your good matchups are, what the bad matchups are, Yes. your play pattern, everything. And you can sure. see Jake Beardsley is just so comfortable in the seat. Yep, yeah. that's the main thing. Just make sure you know your deck, make sure you Pretty can play around the other big decks. Unless, of course, you found the Vein Ripper <laughs> vampire text, then do that. Always do the vampire <laughs> yes. stuff. Yes, always play vampires. Yes. I can't wait to see that. Me too. <laughs> oh, goodness me. <laughs> a little foreshadowing for later in the day, I imagine, as I some of so. the best players in the world are playing such a cool deck. I sure hope so. And look at this. So pilot down, oh, thoughts he's doesn't hit anything except Jake Beardsley, but that's yep. going to be enough to tie up game number two here. So yep. one and one a piece. And that was a master class for anybody playing Rakdos to not to, to always have the ability, just because you can thought seize on a turn doesn't mean you should. It's yeah. all about timing uh, to make sure you give your opponent the least amount of draws to manipulate your draws. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And as much as it's important to know sure. your deck, also know what your opponent's game plan is. Yes. He knew exactly that this is going to be the th this is going to be the big score turn. So yeah. let's get as much information as we can. Score on a war a mountain. Okay, and that looks like a mulligan there to, I want to say five here for Benton. Yeah, that's Not where you want it to start when you're on the play, especially when you're up against a four to seven Thoughtseize style <laughs> deck. Yeah. Being on the dr or on the play when your opponent can start with one of those spells ends up being so brutal. Score. Oh my goodness, yeah, Still there's, the there's four Thoughtseizes. There's a duress, which we saw. Two duresses in the sideboard, yep. as well as three go blanks, just in case. Wow. <laughs> Jake's not a fan of people having cards in hand. No. In <laughs> or in the graveyard if he brings in go blank, but I know yeah. that's just for our glide I mean, when you can't grief, <laughs> evoke grief, and not dead after all it, you got to take the cards out of their hand the old-fashioned way. Two spells at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Trigger. Looks like we're playing lands in front here for Benson Madsen. Yep. 
And it looks like uh, Jake Beardsley's commander is Fable of the Mirror Breaker as it comes into play sure. every single time on turn three. Um, I'm thinking on the discard. Thinking and on discard for chapter two here. What are we chucking? I see Bankbuster in hand, another Fable. Double Lance. Bankbuster Swamp, yep. Discard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, when it, when you want to think about playing Rakdos, <laughs> if you have Fable on three a lot, the deck looks a lot different than if you don't, you know? I mean, Rakdos Come is on. one of those decks. You can talk to someone, and they're like, wow, the, I'm playing the best Second deck. I don't know why phase. more people are playing it. And you can talk to other Box people and three. be like, that is the worst unplayable deck. I don't know why people are playing <laughs> it. So it'll be nice to clear up that narrative one way or the other at the end of this weekend. Boy, man, one, this hell yeah, one short of escaping yeah. Proxa. Can't even play big score if you draw it. Like Drops that's the, the thing is you need at least some resources from this yeah. is it creativity deck to get off the ground. Man, Jake's just found everything he needs. He has ripped Benton's resources to shreds. Yeah. Bank and is wow, it, one card uh, away from I just bringing back Croxa. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do against Croxa? Sure. <laughs> you Goodbye. can creativity it. Sure. Yeah. Like there's nothing else to do with it. <laughs> this list. Benton has to draw big score into land, big score into anything like draw. right now yeah. into creativity. Like that's a tall ask. You know, you pretty much have to stack your deck yeah. into the perfect combinations <laughs> to get it done here. One tide harvester. It's gonna use it one time. One yep. tide harvester hits the board here. Crew so reckoner another bank perfect crew. Attack for six. There. Attack for six more treasures. Yep. Oh no, excuse me, that's a reflection. Yep. And now able to sack something to the blood, so next turn Croxa can come back. Yeah. Nine, ten. At most, Jake can have an attack for ten next turn. Well, I guess the hive makes it thirteen, but that's still not yeah. fourteen. So we'll see. Nice and slow. Jake will ha try to have a two-turn clock presented to Benton. Fifteen. I have two. Goodness me, Jake just like plowing through this round. Yeah. Get to those 12 wins, be done and dusted as quick as possible. Yep. <laughs> I mean, the last pro tour, you know, since the world championship isn't yeah. technically a pro tour, <laughs> the last pro tour ended with Jake Beardsley playing Rakdos through the end of the tournament. So picking up right where he left off. Yeah. All right, there is creativity, though, and there is volcanic spite. So pretty good stuff, but you just need that big score here. Sure. off the top. Oh, oh, there it is. Discarded creativity as well. That's a rough spot. Oh, boy. So now we found the big score. Crocs is Crocs. gonna make you discard the land, though, which is gonna be three more, and then you don't have time to big score. So I just don't see a way out for Wait, Benton. For turn escape Crocs, huh? <laughs> As the chains go. <laughs> if you played this big, dumb idiot in the arena. I can see you. I know you don't play much Croxa, but I'm sure you lost to a lot of Croxa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, if he's in the sacrifice. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. That goes well with Cat Oven. Oh, yeah. I take it back. Yeah, he makes you two foods. <laughs> You'll get a 11. Goodness me. Down Fruit. to 11 six. goes Benson in for six. So down to five. It's not looking hot here for our runner up from Pro Tour Phyrexia. All will be one. And top deck's fire is a victory. Just kind of insult to injury when your hand gets picked apart. That card, it deals sure. one right now. <laughs> you know, like, just nothing went well here for Benton outside of game number one. Yeah. And, but even game number one didn't feel like a clean. No. That, that, he had to scrap for that. Barely got it through, yeah. yeah. But the difference is he had cards, he had options. But yeah. Jake just Trigger took crossing. all of them away from him yeah. in this matchup. So here's big score. big score. You're able to put two treasures in. This is what has to happen for Benton. You have to find creativity plus a non-land. Oh, two lands. <laughs> wow. Insult to injury. Yeah. That's really unfortunate for Benton. But Jake Beardsley remains undefeated. Yeah, absolutely. Huge victory here to get that first one outside of limited. It's always really good. Be like, okay, maybe my deck is good for this pro tour. And when you uh, put the cherry on top of 3 0 your draft on top of it, <laughs> got to be feeling really good here for uh, Jake Beardsley. It's a great spot to be in for yeah. the undefeated players. And we have one more match to show you, friends. Edgar Rangel versus Yuta Takahashi, former world champion playing Azorius Control up against Rakdos Midrange. So, Corey, right. what do you think we're going to see in this matchup? 
these are, you know, our number two and number three most popular decks. So both players are going to have a ton of experience against each other. And the thing about these two decks, they're very close against the whole field. This matchup is no exception. This is just a very close match. It's going to be if, you know, if... Edgar can time some thought seizes and push through fables and stuff like that. You're going to see him advantaged. And if Yuta can stick it to Fairy, untap, <laughs> and use that two mana to counter the next play, you're going to see Yuta heavily advantaged. Well, there's the thought seize, which is going to play a pivotal part in Edgar's uh, winning strategy here. Yep. Has to know exactly what it is he's up against. Change the equation, mystical disputes. There's Teferi, and there's a sensor. So just nope, 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 Teferi. <laughs> now next to Cat Oven decks, Teferi Control decks are your second favorite, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that disdain as a maybe. <laughs> go go Riley for this round. He'd love this. There you go. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's watching. Absolutely. Yeah, but Teferi rightfully taken from hand there. If you know you're if you know you're playing against a counter spell, then you can play around it. Yep. And uh, it was a little bit light land light here for Utah, uh, but picked up the Hollowed Fountain, which is really nice. And here comes a Thought Seize. And at this point, with Yuta's hand pretty much already face up from yeah. the last thoughts is, he's probably just going to be like, sure, here, here's all my counter spells. <laughs> Maybe cycle sensor, I guess, yeah. well. to try to find a land, because finding the land is more important than having three counter spells. What's I think he, that's the decision. What's he worried about cycling into, though? Uh, that's no, real. just worried about thoughts he's taking the sensor and then not being able to cycle. Gotcha. Which also isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is the more proactive play in yeah. hand, so you know, Edgar's gonna be eyeing that out potentially. Let's see what he goes for here. Yeah, now with three mana available anyways, you know, you two can just be like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have to cycle now and uh, you know, change the equation. Counters spells with mana value two or less, or counters big red or green spells, yeah. pretty much any red or green spells. I spy a shieldred, which <laughs> dodges all of that. So sensor, <laughs> that's one reason to keep that around. Yeah. Change the equation could deal with stomp. It looks like that's what's gonna happen. So there's one counter spell down. Yep. And with this sensor still face up, as it's just been Thoughtseize, we're not going to see Shieldred get jammed, where we for sure would if Yuta yep. would cycle. So now Yuta does have the problem that he's going to run into, where if Edgar has land five, this sensor is going to be blank cardboard and yep. have to be cycled in response. Blood Tide Harvester on the board. Going to get chipping away here at Yuta Takahashi's life total. So there's the sensor cycled. What did we find here for Utah? All right, looks like field, and I believe another land, the blue-white surveil land. Meticulous archive? Yeah, meticulous archive, I believe. So since this second thought sees, Utah has drawn six land. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, when Yuta kept the hand, Yuta was like, okay, all I need to do is just keep drawing land. <laughs> and now he's like, whoa, deck, okay, that's enough now. <laughs> so we've often seen players mulligan to a hand that's, in quotes, thought sees proof. Yeah. Is there any consideration to do that in Yuta's seat? No, I think the more consideration when you play against Rakdos is to, and I know this is going to sound crazy <laughs> coming from me, but uh, to keep a lot of hands, you know, okay. because your opponent's going to have four to five to six hand disruption spells in game one. So as long as you have a functional hand, you really want to keep it in this matchup because the games go so long, where if you mulligan a close seven and then you see an unplayable six, that's the nightmare. You're like just begging to get your seven back. But, you know, I do like to keep a lot of hands anyways, so I don't know if you can trust my advice on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Never mulligan. There we go. That's terrible advice. Don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That sounded like you weren't saying no more lies there. <laughs> oh, man. The dad jokes are strong with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Castle Vantress here is the best land that Utah could have gotten, yeah. at least to be able to try to find something nice, because as it stands, if Edgar were to go for this Shieldred here, I think it's just gonna work. 
And so far, Edgar has just said, no, I don't want to run my Shieldred into this. I want to play very defensive. And it's, you know, kind of bit him a little bit. Yeah. As Utah has not had an answer for it at all. But now it's Scry territory. Oh, yeah. Two more lands to the bottom. And if we can find something like Teferi, wow. uh, then we can uh, really get something There were so going. many lands of Supreme Verdict off the top there. Yeah. So many lands in a row there. So Castle Vantress coming in clutch here for yep. you to Takahashi. The archive surveilling away another land. Nine out of ten of the top cards since that second thought sees were land. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where we start moaning about the shuffler being rigged? Absolutely. Okay, yep, cool. yep, All right. yep. Very, very good thing to get <laughs> going there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, chat. Yeah, there you go. All right, so lands sitting untapped here for Yuta Takahashi. There is a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So two creatures, the Bank Buster and the Fable. That was two more lands, a hall and what? an island. What is going on? Which has just got to mean there's got to be a lot of spells here coming okay. eventually. It's Dovin's Veto. You know, it's, it's fine. Yep. And you have the Supreme Verdict here. I was going to say, when are we going to see that fired off? Because at this point, Edgar's probably not putting any more pressure on the battlefield. When you already have a Harvester and a Shaman, yeah. that's about all you want to put in this matchup. You yeah. know, you just, no matter what, you don't want to give your opponent three for ones. Two for ones are already what this matchup's about. Yeah, so now Yuta Takahashi's encouraging a couple extra things to be played out. Yeah. Something you could potentially, Dovin's Veto? Fingers crossed, perhaps, but uh, the stick it doesn't really have that many good veto targets. Yeah, not really. This feels like a turn where I would want to jam Shieldred from Edgar. Edgar's had it in hand for so long, um, especially with there being four vetoes in the deck. I think huh. not playing Shieldred there is actually playing around... Um, if, you, if you play Shieldred, you're playing around a lot more cards with there being four vetoes, so... But yeah. I think what Edgar's trying to do is wait till he gets seven mana to play around the No More Lies. But at some point, you don't want to play around too many things or you're kind of playing around nothing. Yeah. You know, the age-old saying of make them have it. Yeah. You know, just jam your threats. A hundred percent. Correctly. Well, you know, confidently at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, just try and keep the life total ticking down because the longer this game goes, the more it favors the control player. Yep, 100%. Yeah, Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa wrote a great article about that. Mm -hmm. Just saying, just make them have it. That was the sum up of it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've kind of lived by that as well, and I think it's the correct way to do it. Pretty sure I read that and picked it up from there too. So yep. yeah, <laughs> PV knows what he's talking about. Absolutely. <laughs> so now we have a flip fable, a bank buster again. And here's an Inti, one of the Ooh, newest nice. additions to Inti's this Rakdos sweet. deck. Inti is incredible. You're going to see Inti in a lot of different decks. You know, it, it kind of put a few decks on the map. Is it in Soul being one of them? Yeah. You know, that's one of the key cards in that deck. Um, and just ends up being an incredibly powerful card. Has made, yeah. it way to, it's, has made its way to modern as well. Very cool. You know, the red base decks haven't had the greatest time of digging through the top of the library, but... Yeah, yep. this just fits in so nicely into so many different strategies. So yep. cool to see it in action here. Now, that being said, it can still get fiery impulse mm -hmm. even when you don't have spell mastery. So it is very vulnerable on the turn you play it. But if you get some value, you can get it done. And wow, Yuta just never drew anything there. Yeah, that was just <laughs> like no gas at all. Yeah. Just puttering along there as uh, long as he could. But let's see if game number two yields a better hand here for our former former world champion. Got to give your deck a good shuffle after that one oh, yeah. if you are Yuta. Yeah. This hand looks a lot better. I see Teferi, Dovin's Veto, Teferi number two, Hollowed Fountain, and a, another couple lands. So Dovin's Vetoes and Teferi's. Nice. That's all you want, right? Yep. And Thought Seasons and Duresses from <laughs> Edgar's side of <laughs> <Yeah>. things. <laughs> Just taking a peek. I'm usually on the side of uh, wanting to play the proactive elements yeah. unless the control decks are incredibly powerful. And once again, that's another one of the big questions we'll be asking all of ourselves this weekend. Is blue-white in a good enough position to make it a good deck, or is it kind of a bad deck? You know, I think Rakdos midrange and Azorius control, people are so torn on if those are good or bad decks. <laughs> 
So the Teferis get to stay, but the Dobin's Veto out of hand here for Yuta Takahashi. So Edgar wants to get that Fable of the Mirror Breaker down no more. on turn three, if possible. No more lies off the top, though. So if this is a bank buster, it might be heading right to the exile zone. <laughs> Got him. No more lies. Finding a target. Bank buster down. What do we have in hand there? For Edgar. I don't, don't think I saw a... Ooh, he's got an Aklazots in hand. Ooh, big bad guy. Not the best card in this matchup, no, to be but honest. Fun. But fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will not argue with you on that fact, that's for sure. <laughs> well, he's a five mana, you know, so it's going to be... Bat God versus Teferi, Time Guy, so. <laughs> yeah, and Utah sticking to the game one theme has ripped uh, two lands off the top after the No More Lies. Oh, good grief. But we will, no matter what, have Teferi next turn, but it is nighttime. Oh, Graveyard Trespasser. Hello, little wolf. Well, big wolf. Yeah. Okay. Thoughtsies once again, so let's start working on Teferi's, the only valid targets. I will discard the other one. Ooh, oh, brutal. what is going on? I was like, it only really makes sense to cast Thoughtsies if you do have the second one, knowing there's one Teferi, but uh -huh. now Yuta's already up against it, has to find a way to deal with this Trespasser. Oh, goodness grief. Okay, yeah, it's daytime now, so at least, you know, that's limited and it's damage nighttime. a little bit. <laughs> now it's nighttime again. Back to night. Oh, uh oh, I like it at this point yeah. for Yuta. This has just been terrible draws for this, for this deck. Yeah, really bad stuff. But at the same time, you know, there has been five thought seasons over these yeah, two yeah, games, yeah. and uh, three of them have taken to fairies. You know, so that <laughs> is the way to stop this blue-white control deck. <laughs> okay, found an absorb. You know, pad the life throw a little bit. At least he can hit anything that uh, Edgar throws out there. But Castle Lockdwain, a land yeah. that a lot of people have went away from, as it's just not that great in most matchups, this is not one of them. This is great yeah, in this matchup. this is fantastic. Like, yeah. sure, it's going to hit me a bunch, but you know what? It's yeah. all right. Life total. It's a resource, so. Definitely. Utah it down to eight now. What's he going to fire off here? Yeah, and I don't see any sharks in Utah's list. Um, they're all in the sideboard here. Yeah. Probably came in, but you never know. So uh, Fable taken care of, courtesy of the Absorb, getting some life off of that too. <laughs> 11 apiece, but all that damage has been done by Edgar himself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, boy. And just two more lands in Utah's hand, and yeah, this is not going well. No, not at all. For Utah. Oh, so pretty awful start here to the Pioneer section of the Pro Tour. <laughs> There's Aklozots down now too, so. Yeah, I mean, this is going to get interesting. This is basically lethal right now. There's yeah. that land to chump block. There's a power there, and that's going to do it. So that was, I want to call that a non-game. That just, oh, okay. Edgar did what his yeah. deck was meant to do. Yep. Disrupting the hand, taking all the threats, but the top of the library was so unkind to Yuta there. It really was, and it solved the debate already in round four. Rakdos midrange is good. Azorius control, unplayable. We already <laughs> solved it. We already solved it here. So, no, just kidding, of course. That was just some really bad draws. If Corey doesn't come back afterwards, you know Riley got hold of him. Yeah. Anyway, friends, <laughs> we'll see you after this break. <laughs>